Um, hi, welcome. My name is Lauren Spears. I am Perks Marketing Event Manager. Um, if this is your as's first lunch and learn with us, welcome. If you guys are returning from last year, welcome back. We're happy to have you guys. Um, today we have Jamin Harkness on the call with us. He is the executive vice president for the management group, which is also also recently named 2021 best places to work in multifamily. And he is sitting down with our EVP of marketing, Mohammed Yassin. Um, Mohammed and Jamin will be taking a look back at 2020, you know, seeing what went right, what we could improve on, and what is here to stay for 2021. Um, during this session, Jamin and Mohammed will be referring to some documents and pictures. So be on the lookout for me to pop those up on your guys' screens, as well as share some interactive polls you guys can take. Um, also during this session, you guys can use the chat feature or Q&A feature to ask any questions you might have. Um, Mohammed and Jamin will get to those either during the session or on post Q&A follow-up. Um, after the session is done, we will do a quick recap and announce what we have for the future. But now, Mohammed and Jamin, you guys can go ahead and get started with our session. Thank you very much, Lauren. I'm uh, really excited to be back. It's been, I think, since November since we all uh, got together and chatted, and uh, it's been a while. So thanks, everyone, for taking some time out on this Thursday and joining Jamin and I as we chit chat. Um, you and I, I guess we talked like, what, two days ago, but before that, there was a bit of a gap uh, through the holidays, and I'm, I'm really excited to kind of chit chat with you, look back at 2020. Lots happened, lots to talk about there, and I think also some areas that we're both really passionate about that I'm looking forward to diving into. So um, thank you, first of all, for uh, jumping on with me today, and uh, thanks to everyone else for coming to hang out with us. Really appreciate that. So we are going to jump right into this. Lots of talk of 2020 in general all over the place, right? I remember as we were ending the year, watching some of the uh, yearly recaps, lots of talk about what worked and what didn't. I'm very interested, Jamin, in advice you gave yourself, because I know you do a lot of planning. You're very, very organized going into last year. Um, I know 90% of my plans completely blew up in my face right around March. Um, yeah. What worked for you? What advice or what plans were you making going into the year that you were actually able to follow? Yeah, well, thank you for having me. It's nice to be able to talk with you, uh, Mohammed and Lauren and Perk team. Um, you know, going into 2020, we had no idea about the pandemic. No one did. And I just really wanted to focus on our team growth. Um, and I had two specific initiatives I wanted to underline throughout the year. Um, and so I wanted to, first of all, develop specific team members uh, into different positions, but I wanted to really underline our efforts. We had launched it uh, kind of at Q4 of 2019, but I really wanted us to work on our women's leadership group inside of mm -hmm. TMG. And that's something I wanted to help support and approve expenses and nudge people along, but then I wanted to be completely out of it. And so our awesome marketing director, Brooke, she, um, uh, she headed that up for us. And she did, I think they did three or four events last year where they brought in speakers and they had all these, uh, all these, all these great times and talking. And then I wanted to focus in February on Black History Month. Um, we took our entire company, we shut down our offices and our um, corporate office, and we went down to the Martin Luther King Center, we went to the Ebenezer, Historic Ebenezer Baptist Church, we went to the Martin Luther King home, and I was a little nervous because I went the day before, and it was raining, and I was like, gosh, I don't hmm. know how is this going to go, and I don't know how to kind of put it in context because a lot of it's not really guided, and it was the lunch that, I, that we all went to afterwards that really had some interesting dialogue. And so wow. I'm really proud that we did that. And we continued that through 2020, even in the, even in the middle of, of the pandemic. We all, as a company, got together uh, and watched a movie, um, especially during the civil unrest. We watched The Banker, and then we all sat down and talked about it. That's amazing. And, and I think there are a lot of companies, I think, last year that clearly uh, following some of the unrest over the summer really started uh, being intentional and trying to spend some time on diversity topics as a whole, right? Regardless yeah, of what that diversity may be. But I love, I love that you went into the year thinking about it and being diligent about it. 
you know, we've kind of evolved. We've decided that now we're changing it to diversity, equity, and inclusion because we have several other groups within our company. We have a very diverse company. And so we're just going to have a DE&I initiative uh, going forward. I love it. I think that's the future. And we're, we're, we're much the same way as well as we started really, you know, digging in as an organization about what it meant to really be inclusive and be diverse. Um, there are a lot of a lot of components to it. So and um, um, and I gotta I tell that. you, it's really it's really really good, Muhammad, for company culture to do this stuff and to talk about it and to confront it. In fact, next uh, next week our whole company we're we're shutting down on I think it's Wednesday or Thursday, and we're all watching the John Lewis movie Good Trouble, and we're gonna dialogue about it on on, on our teams. That is that is awesome. That is awesome. I one I think thread that kept popping up as you and I were planning for this session really was just the idea of like culture and mental health, right, in a workplace setting, and certainly a big um, a big soapbox for me as well. So I I appreciate having someone to kind of chat with uh, about that. That same idea though of like mental health is a big rising topic, especially amongst like Gen Z millennial renters in particular. Right. Um, I know all of my friends are certainly talking about that through multiple social channels and chat. It's all about, you know, how are we feeling right now? How do we process that? Because it's been a it's been a rough nine, 10, 11 months at this point. Um, what are some ways you that, you know, a community can help enhance their guidelines to accommodate mental health in general and a community perspective? Yeah, we are really focusing a lot on the outdoor spaces. Uh, people want to be outside anyway. And uh, it works with the pandemic uh, instead of um, putting everybody into a room. And, um, and we've really, really leaned into uh, ESAs, into emotional support mm. animals and service animals. Um, and the way that, and, and, and general animals. <laughs> um, can I talk to you a little bit about our pet policies and things? Please do. Please okay. do. For those yeah, of so you we, who have been uh, with this for a while, you, you, yeah, you may remember this for the past the I don't know, um, 11, 12 <laughs> months. So we made a huge decision to, um, to eliminate breed restrictions and weight limits. Um, and we, you know, it's kind of scary to do that. The reason we always had these limits was we said, well, that's what our insurance will, you know, it's what they require. And we want right. to cover if someone gets bit by a, a big dog. And we talked to our insurance and they said, no, that's nowhere in your policy. That's all you. So wow. we said, uh, yeah, so we said, you know what, let's, um, let's, let's get rid of these. And we also don't charge pet rent. Now, a lot of people see that as like low hanging fruit. You can take advantage of someone and charge pet rent. And what, you know, why not get the income of the property up? Our thought was we measured it by, we measured it by retention. I'll get that mm. bump instead of pet rent by just having lower turnover, no vacancy loss. I don't have to turn that unit again. And we found that 80% of our residents that had pets renewed. Now, we had to do a few things. We we had to really really enhance our dog parks. So we um, okay. And and what do I mean by that? I put mulch on it a couple times a year instead of just one every time it looks bare. So we do it in advance. We added some benches and some little obstacles. We did some uh, you know resident events for pets. We ordered bandanas for the dogs that we gave out. And we have dog treats on all of our desks and things. So in in order to do that, we worked with a company uh, called Pet Screening and. Um, they are free for the apartment community. It's free. Uh, they charge the residents that move in with PET a $20 fee. And what it does is they give you a FIDO score instead of a FICO score. And uh, <laughs> people have to upload their shot records and they have to sign affidavits. And also non-PET owners have to go through it too and sign an affidavit that I'm not gonna get a PET and I understand the PET rules. Um, but but they, the biggest benefit of this company, and I know this is not about this company, but one of the, it allowed me to work with emotional service animals and, um, and, uh, and service animals because they have lawyers on staff and they actually have denied 60% nice. of the applications because they can spot the fake ones. I had one incident where I really spent over a thousand dollars with an attorney because we had a guy that wanted to bring his dog that was on our, uh, you know, he didn't want to pay the pet deposit or, um, you know, or whatever. And he called it his ESA and he, he had a letter from a doctor in Hawaii that he had never seen. And the letter even said that. And so now I'm here trying to decide, is it legit or not legit? He's, he's using legal words. We engage an attorney. I'm spending money with an attorney to work all this. I don't have to do any of that now. I work with pet screening. And the other thing I did was I rolled out um, poo prints. I know there's a couple companies with that. And you know that's where they swab the inside um, of the dog's mouth and they send it in so that if there's poop on the property, it matches up. And we charge a $350 fine for the first one and 500 for each subsequent one. And it really, wow. really works. Um, and our non-pet owners love that the most. 
I can imagine. I, I love how you are approaching this, not only from the uh, perspective of opening up the options, right? Because, uh, I mean, the amount of pets I love being adopted over the past year has certainly skyrocketed. I know I have a, you know, pl lots of friends and family who have uh, new fur babies, you know, over the past year. Um, because we're kind of all isolated and, 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 and need them. But you are able to provide, I think, additional service and more flexibility for your residents while at the same time reducing some of your costs in association with it from an operational perspective, which is you know, brilliant. I, I, I love that. Yeah, we've, um, we've, we've since added, now that we have a lot of pets, we've since added the requirement that there's an animal liability waiver on people's renter's insurance when they come in. And that's not a hard thing or an unusual thing. And we found that 75% of the policies already include that. Oh, wow. Um, so I'll give the names again to Lauren afterwards. It's petscreening.com. And, um, and, and, and there's a couple of the DNA companies. We use Poo Prints, P-O-O Prints. I love, I, I saw them at NAA back in uh, December. I guess the last, last one we were, where we're all at. And I, they're a great, great group over there. Um, Lauren, if you can pop up, we have a polling question just around kind of mental health. Uh, this is our first one of two or three. So we're going to leave that up for a second. And I want to continue diving a little bit more into the idea um, of mental health as a whole from a community management perspective. Um, there are a lot of things closing their doors to in-person and or in different areas opening and then closing and then opening and closing gyms, uh, you know, are a good example of that pools. And this is not just about, you know, our communities, but just society as a whole. And a lot of people kind of going back and forth, uh, not having the outlets they need to be able to manage their own mental and emotional health in those settings. Um, and, or I work right here, this is my couch in my bedroom. I need a change of pace sometimes. Uh, and it can sometimes be hard to find that space. What are some ways that you are um, leaning into the idea of providing some of those services to your, to, to your communities? Yeah, well, you know, with the fitness centers and uh, especially with the swimming pool, and I'll tell you a little bit more about this whenever we did our phased reopening plan, but immediately we shut everything down but people wanted to use the gym. So we found services, they're out there. I have a great one I use called Julie White Fitness and uh, where they provide online fitness classes. Mm. Um, and, um, and they also do cooking classes uh, and they'll do like a charcuterie board class and they'll do a you know, hairstyling class and all this other fun stuff. And then we just started to set up um, you know, things like cornhole outside in the in, in areas around the, just to really help people still get out and still feel like they had some services. We did drive-by breakfast, you know, where we'd stand there and we'd reach our arm out and we'd hand them their breakfast bag right. and things like that. Yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back up a little bit be, be, to, to purpose on this because you're doing a lot from a like mental health perspective at the property level. Some of these things you maybe didn't have to do, but you clearly chose that it was the right thing to do. Why? Why are you? Uh, why are you leaning into that? Um, it wasn't. It was not because the residents were saying, "Hey, I'm paying for a gym and now I can't use it." It wasn't that. It was that we were all going through something we didn't know, and I was really trying hard to wrap my arms around my team. And I find mm -hmm. that when I wrap my arms around my team, they want to wrap their arms around the residents. And so a lot of this came up from my awesome team members too. That's awesome. That's awesome. Let, let's let's kind of uh, switch a little bit and actually talk about the leasing team as, uh, as well. They have been working really, really hard um, over this past year and have gone through a lot of changes. And I, you know, certainly commend them for all the, for rolling with the punches as, as we've continued through things here. Um, technology has, has been a way that I think all of us have had to uh, adjust our lives um, what are you doing for them? We'll start from a technology perspective, but I want to kind of dive into some more of these culture pieces as well. Um, and just so we can kind of get a share going there. Yeah, um, I think that I think that at TMG, at least our company, our president, when we started the company four years ago, four and a half years ago, he made a very wise decision that, and I kind of was nervous about it because I was a little <laughs> bit old school about everybody just having laptops. Everybody has laptops. If you need an extra monitor, fine, we'll get you an extra monitor. Uh, I actually you know, plug my laptop into a TV above my desk because I need it for my eyes. Um, and with that, we were able to pivot. Uh, I know that's the word for 2020, but we were able to be very <laughs> agile and to switch out and to have, and we were able to send people home. 
uh, to work from home. And when we did that, we kind of remembered that we had this technology called CRM. Some people use different ones. You know, we use CRM. There's not, there's a lot of other great ones out there. I think they all kind of accomplish the same thing. And we mm -hmm. really paid attention to what can we do with this software. And so I operate under a philosophy called unspoken expectations or the breeding ground of resentment. So I clearly speak my expectations. So we came up with a daily activity report. So people that are working from home, we set our expectations and they knew exactly what we were gonna ask them so they could report every day at the end of the day. We just did a little form software online and they would say, how many people are in your queue at the beginning of the day and how many are at the end? And mm. did you make your renewal calls? And did you help out with, you know, if it was if their job was to help with delinquency, did you do your delinquency? Did you post on social media? And that way people could sit at home and they knew what was expected of them. So when I sent people home, I wanted to be very clear with that. Also, how do we handle the phones? We use VOIP technology. Um, and you know, the best thing in the world is, is that you can just grab your cell phone and, um, and get an app and make it a soft phone. So our office phones ring on people's cell phones. Got it. Got it. You, you, you mentioned a thing, uh, about, about folks working from home. Have you gone back to the office yet? I know there's a lot of companies that are kind of on the cusp or hybrid right now. Yeah, where, where are you all at right now? I talked to a lot of leaders. We, um, we are not, we're closed. Um, we have one person in the office, um, sometimes two, as long as they promise me they're gonna stay apart uh, to give out packages. And we have okay. a whole package thing where they call us uh, and we set it outside the door for them. Um, but our doors are locked. And, um, and so no, wow. no, we're still closed. We were following the White House CDC guidelines about, uh, about, follow up, you know, about phased opening. You know, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute, but um, we, we closed probably in late March. We opened back up after we saw 14 days of a downward trajectory in September. And then all of a sudden it turned around. And after about three weeks, we just closed again and we're still closed. I don't care if we're closed until June um, or right. December. Um, I want to, you know, you know, we were very clear about why we closed. And we even say this to our residents. We're very clear with our residents. We communicate with our residents. Why are we closed? What are we doing? And we have two reasons why we're closed. Number one, first and foremost are my team members health. That's first and foremost to us. We, we care so much about our team members. We know that when we do that, they will then take care of our residents. And number two, number two we didn't want to contribute to the pandemic. I, fair, right? <laughs> fair. Um, well, from the team member perspective, clearly you care a, a lot about them. I mean, the, 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 the idea of uh, setting that, drawing that line in the sand and saying, we're staying closed. We're literally locking the door. Um, is a is a big big one to make um, for sure, right? So I I I 100% believe when you say that the the health of those leasing agents, those people that are on site, is of utmost importance to you. Um, outside of letting them work from home and uh, for the folks that are in there, letting them keep the doors locked and kind of do a place it outside the door and pick it up situation. What else are you doing to really keep them engaged right now um, and productive? Accountability is great, right? And it, yeah. it definitely drives productivity. Um, but at the same time, you kind of have to get people in the right headspace to really want to be productive. What are you, what are you doing from that perspective? Yeah. Um, and also, also, let me be completely transparent. How do you do that with maintenance? Maintenance guys, my maintenance guys are still working every day. Um, and they, and we're making sure they have PPE and we're, we ask them every single week, they have to report on their PPE. We've been giving them a monthly bonus, every single team member, because we feel like they're having to work mm. a little bit harder without the office support. And then on my lease up, my non-stabilized properties, my lease up properties are open with significant precautions. So, so, you know, so we have legacy properties that are closed and we have our lease up properties that are open. And then our maintenance guys are all working. Um, but you asked me, what else are we doing, um, um, as far as keeping the teams together and communicating. I yep. think that um, like Zoom started to get important right at the pandemic, Microsoft Teams yep. rolled out. And so we started to have team meetings and we started to have three meetings a week. And I didn't want to just talk to my department heads or just to the managers. I wanted to talk to everybody. Um, so we have a meeting um, uh, and we're still doing it. We have all of our leasing and assistants get together uh, you know, for one team meeting. Uh, and we have an agenda and they have to report on their progress of their properties. And we, you know, we pop up a spreadsheet and we fill it out as they're talking so everybody can kind of compete with each other and see where everyone's at. We talk about, is it matching our goal or not? We do the same thing with our maintenance team members and they have different goals. How many open work orders? How many not ready vacants do you have? Do you have appropriate PPE? What challenges do you have? How can we help you? 
And then the last one that we do is our property managers and corporate uh, office uh, department heads. That one mm-hmm. has been mm-hmm. such a cool synergy because each it's no longer corporate against the properties or the properties against corporate. Now everybody knows what their goals are. They also do reporting on their properties and what are their goals. We actually set goals and there's this really nice synergy uh, where everyone understands what everyone's up against. I tried to pause these meetings in January because I was kind of getting tired. I do, I do three meetings <laughs> yeah, every, yeah. Monday and Tuesday. It's a lot of work to put them together. We do agendas, we send them out. I mean, we're, we hold everybody accountable and we run these meetings and everyone's like, no, 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 this is the best part. And it's really helped us a lot. <laughs> our numbers are strong. Our occupancy is just as strong as ever. We exceeded our 2019 numbers. So we think that with that communication and looking at everybody, and we always have a fun question, what's your favorite food? What's the hardest thing about working from home? Right. You know, we actually have some people that prefer to come into the office and they kind of fight for the spaces to come in and do packages just because they want to get out of their home. <laughs> you know what? Well, with a couple of kids here and a few pets, I, I understand wanting to get out every once in a blue moon. <laughs> for sure. Um, I'm hearing you talk a lot about technology from a support perspective and enablement perspective for your, for your team. Um, you've mentioned a lot of spreadsheets, right? You've mentioned a couple of forms. You've mentioned the soft phones. You've mentioned just the idea of hardware from a laptop perspective, um, you know, at the top level. Um, what other tools have, I, they all, a lot of technologies evolved last year. What tools yeah. are you finding are incredibly valuable um, for hitting those amazing numbers that you just mentioned? Yeah, um, you know, virtual tours and self-guided tours. So virtual tours, I didn't really know what that meant. I mean, I knew there were some companies out there and I knew it kind of was out of my reach for software. So as soon as the pandemic hit in February, I sent out um, all of our leasing team members with their iPhones to do walkthrough videos of every floor plan type in English and in many cases in Spanish. Um, you know, and then and how do we get those videos into people's hands? Um, we uploaded them on YouTube. It's free. We can send a link. Then we also popped that link onto our property website, uh, too. So that's how we define virtual tours. They're homemade. They're a little bit more authentic. Yeah. You want to take a look at one of them? Go look at one of my properties. Go look at CrestSugarLoaf.com. That's a good example. Um, and then we also had started the conversation uh, with our software provider, Yardi, is who we use, about self-guided tours, and we rolled that out. We had started the conversation in January, and it accelerated fast, and I think we launched our first self-guided tours in April, and that's the way we're leasing now. Um, gotcha. There's a few, there's kind of a few mistakes along the way. I was really nervous because um, I was, I'm only doing them in, my, in our company, and I know there's many ways of doing it. I know Rentley does them in vacants. We do ours only in models. Um, and, but we had to work through, how do you get people inside your gate? And, um, you know, and I just had this model that I redid. It cost me 25 grand. I don't want these strangers in my model. So we, you know, so we (laughs) we signed up for internet service and put a ring camera in there. So we overcame a lot of obstacles. Um, how do we scan their ID that works in our scheduling your self-guided tours, but you know, one of the best things that we've noticed Mohammed is, um, uh, everyone does the wow refrigerators. Um, you know, my tip for the wow refrigerators, if you have Instacart, they'll just deliver it to your property. You don't have to go shopping at Costco, but anyway, we stuff them full of, of drinks. We put ice cream in the top and we put a ton of variety of drinks and snacks and chips and candy bars in the refrigerators. And we saw within the first week of rolling out self-guided tours, people going over to, cause we were watching, we were peeping on the camera and we put a sign up that says smile, you're on camera, uh, just so it's not creepy. Um, and we actually watched people go open it up because we put a sign on the fridge that says open me for snacks they grab a snack they're, they 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 go wow and they go sit on my <laughs> sofa and they eat cheetos and a coke and they're they're like wow i could see myself living here it's just like a scripted interaction that i that i always wanted and so we wow. love it we keep those things full uh we're sanitizing every day the models and we're you know we're stuffing them full of snacks that's 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 i love it i love the fridge i love the fact that you're actually able to kind of watch that scenario and it's almost you know, uh, from a walkthrough perspective, if you're accompanying them, it sounds like you have actually recreated that and had them walk themselves through that same scenario, possibly even in a more comfortable setting because they don't have someone, for lack of a better word, hovering there, right? Yeah, and I got to say that if you look at that, you know, there's a couple of things. Um, let me pop out two other tips when you roll out self-guided tours. If you do it in a model, make sure you start putting toilet paper and soap and sand in, in the models because people have to go to the restroom and that's not usually a thing in, in models. Um, and also throw up a fair housing sign in there too. Um, but um, yeah, the self-guided tours have, 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 have really, really worked you know, well for us. Uh, we, it's, kind of, it's kind of like a lot of, all of my properties are in the suburbs. And so mm-hmm. I think in large cities, 
people are used to it. I think in New York and Boston, I know they're just used to it. It's kind of there. But for us, it's a new thing. Prospects didn't know I could go look on my own. And, and I was mentioning earlier that one of the mistakes I made was like, I only want them there during office hours where I can kind of keep an eye on it. But that's really not the right. purpose of a self-guided tour. So we've, we've come to eight to eight. Ours are eight in the morning till eight at night. Um, and um, when we opened just for the three weeks in September, we were surprised when we would go show a model that people were in there. They, they were a self-guided tour. We found that some people just want to bypass the leasing office. Interesting. You know? Interesting. In that window of time, is there, do you, do you see a skew towards morning, evening, middle of it? Is it, or is it pretty even it's all, all over. the way through? It's all over. And we get the little charts, the time charts. It's just really all over. It's, 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 it's all over. And we've, we've settled with eight to eight. That works for us. Gotcha. Gotcha. Why eight o'clock? Eight in the morning. Some people want to hit it before work. And I don't want, and I don't want strangers on my property after eight at night. And we also notify just... everybody in the breezeway that the model's on, you know, Okay. Okay. That's not, that's uh communication really sounds like really key to everything you got going on there. Um, from a tool perspective. So you, you mentioned definitely self-guided tours. Um, a lot of people leaned into those in, 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 in 2020. There's also a lot of talk and we had this in our, in our November session. One of the big topics of conversation was the fact that a lot of people are getting a decent number of, of, of leads at this point, right? They're, they are coming in, they're coming in consistently. But one of the struggles we're having really is around how do you manage those? Um, how you manage those in a reasonable way? How do you follow up on them? And AI continues to keep coming up. I'm seeing it from multiple different, not only uh, you know, property management companies, but also uh, technology companies that are introducing AI solutions inside of the multifamily space, AI, chatbot, et cetera. Um, talking about this excitement here, right? Uh, yeah. What do people need to, first of all, why is it important? And second of all, what do we need to be thinking about when we are looking at evaluating these tools? Because there are a lot of options popping up right now. Yeah, I was, um, so I'm a big fan of click rate optimizers. That's what I call you, Perk. I don't know if y'all identify as that. <laughs> you know, the way I was I'll told on, on your company was that um, you, you had a salesperson named Patty that showed me, she was, you know, we went to lunch and she said, I'm just going to open my laptop. And I went, oh, here we go. And she said, <laughs> okay, now pop in your Google Analytics, um, you know, password and let's look at it. And I was like, okay. So we looked at it and I'm a nerd. I like analytics. And she said, look how many visitors you had to your website. All right, now go open up your software. How many, how many leads and how many leases did you get from your website? And it was, I was appalled. I mean, it was mm -hmm. way less than 1%. So, you know, so we love Perk because it is a, and I, and I didn't even tell Mohammed I was going to say this, but we love it because <laughs> you help convert people. Well, in the middle of that converting people, you guys have added an AI. And I, I wanted a chat bot, but I didn't want, I, I wanted one because all the, all the cool companies have them, but I didn't want right, to have another right. blinky thing on my website because I already use Rent Grata and I already use Perk. And so I don't want to create fatigue on my people. I go to, I go to my comps website sometimes. And I'm like, just get out of my way, get out of my way. And I'm trying to be mindful of that. But with your AI bot, what I like is, is sometimes to answer your question, you just want the information. Do you allow dogs? you know, what are your income requirements? And so you can, when you work and set up your AI, it's not very hard. It's a little time consuming, but you, you have to pre um, kind of think about the questions people are going to ask and go ahead right. and, and answer it. So the bot will answer it. But my favorite part is that because we use CRM and CRM um, we've now learned to love instead of hate um, <laughs> because we're, because we better understand how to use it. And that's our connection with the outside world. And, um, and that's where we're communicating. What I love is, is when there's a chat on the AI bot, all of that information goes into our CRM as a guest card. And that gives us context of what was asked before, you know, before we re-engage with that prospect again, whether phone call or email. That, yeah, that, that is, that is, I've been working with chat bots myself just professionally for, 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 for many years. And that process ahead of time, really thinking through what are those common questions um, and being prepared for what do you feel like the right answer is, is super important. And, uh, you know, one of the easy ways to actually collect a lot of that information is talking to those people on the front line that are handling those emails, right? If you've got access to the emails, just kind of breezing through a couple of them really quick and seeing what's being answered, you learn a lot right there. You probably know them, but you'll find a few things that are me, you, for myself that I took for granted. Uh, and didn't think about when I was writing my very important list about what I was going to answer, right? 
and it was simple stuff, right? Like in, in your case, you mentioned uh, pet policies. When do you open? What's your phone number, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. If you huge. see them asking about pet policies, say, hey, what's the name of your dog? Oh, okay. okay. My dog's name is Jax. So you know what? Our, I, our awesome team members are going to put that in the notes and they're going to ask about Jax when they follow up. Right, right. And your dog is adorable. I just saw him we, yesterday for the first time. We, uh, we encourage people <laughs> to bring their pets on tour, even the self-guided tours. We encourage them to bring them along with them. That's, an, that's, that's amazing. You, you're, you're really leaning into the idea of expanding uh, things, I think, uh, versus, versus being really restrictive, which uh, I find, one, refreshing, um, but two, really kind of, let, let's back up and dig into this a little bit because you can take one of two directions, especially when it comes to pets. You can say, I'm going to be incredibly restricted. I'm going to have breed restrictions. I'm going to have pet rent. I'm going to um, maybe frown at you if you bring your puppy uh, to, your, to, your, to, your, to the showing. Um, but you're not doing that. You're going very much in the opposite direction. I'm going to put a bandana on your dog. I'm going to give your dog a treat. <laughs> We're going to get down in love on your dog. We're going to ask if we can take a picture of your dog and put it on social media. You don't think I got that rental? <laughs> you don't. You, you don't. You don't think that. You don't think that when we're taking pictures of our residents' dogs and calling them pet of the month that I, I got that renewal? Of course I do. Absolutely. Question answered. <laughs> got it for sure. Um, let Let's. Uh, you mentioned about everyone being home, making that decision as we're going into 2021. Right. We We don't know. I mean. Vaccines are, are starting to be distributed in areas. Some areas are opening a little bit. Indiana's getting an example of one of those that's somewhat closed, but we're starting to see things going in the right direction, which is which is excellent. Um, do you see maintaining your work from home scenario through the end of the year, uh, in the future in general? What is that? What does this look like for you? Yeah, we definitely. We definitely see, and as we have our legacy properties and we're thinking about redesigning them and refreshing them, and as we build new properties, we have a lot of new properties coming out of the ground and in the works right now. We're shrinking our office footprint and increase expanding the amenity footprint to include some outdoor space, even some covered space. But I, I envision that we will always have one person working from home. And I, we'll do that in rotation. And the reason why is there's so fewer distractions in many cases mm. where they can just focus on the CRM. And our CRM is more than prospects. When we close out a work order, we call back that resident. Uh, we have prompts before people renew, uh, Mohammed, that we do what's called an apartment tune-up. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and we go in and we say, hey, we want to schedule your tune-up even before they renew. Just to go in oh, and say, wow. we want to check all the machines in your apartment to make sure that your heat's not going to go out, to make sure that you're not dealing with a drain that drains slowly or that you haven't called in that dishwasher that's not working. So we do an apartment tune-up. So you're proactively really um, showing care and value for that resident at the just at the moment in time where they're probably making a decision about what they want to do. Like you're getting ahead of it, which is, which is, which is excellent. Um, from the perspective of the uh, maintenance team there, you mentioned kind of doing that, 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 that tune up. Um, you also mentioned earlier giving them, a, you know, an ex extra bonus every, every month, every right? Because month. of that extra work that they're doing there. Um, what are you doing to kind of just manage like maintenance requests in general um, in context of managing that maintenance staff? Yeah. A lot of people we at found, home, right? We now, found right? that our turnover has actually gone down. I think that's probably true nationwide. I don't think that's unique among my company. Uh, people don't want to move in a pandemic, um, but as but the, as everyone knows, the fuller the properties are, th there's more work orders. But yeah. I would contend that there's less work orders if you're doing uh, uh, instead of preventative maintenance once a year where you go in everywhere. We do it as uh, our preventative maintenance is with renewals, um, and and that's the apartment tune-up that I was talking about. So. Um, the first thing is is that um, is that is that we do our callbacks after all the work orders are completed. Everything's done online. Okay. I mean, these guys can see the work orders on their phone. They close them out on their phone. But just to call someone back and say, "Are you happy with the service?" It's really brought everything down to a manageable level. And I want to go back to what you had asked about with the vaccine. Can I tell you a little bit about that? It's kind of Let's a very it. controversial topic in our industry, I think. I did a call just a few weeks ago about can an employer require the vaccine, and and um, and we had an attorney on the call and the answer is yes. 
Um, this is your weekly huddle, right? It's a it's monthly, yeah, monthly multifamily leadership huddle. That's awesome. And um, and but we've at, at TMG at least, and I believe it's pretty much the consensus, uh, you know, nationwide. It's 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 an owner's choice. It's not just the management. It's the owner's choice if okay. they want to require that. It's very controversial um, to talk about that. And I want to at least what I learned on the call was is that you know you know at, at least for my son you know to go to school he has to have vaccines like one of them's the measles mumps rubella in yep. the mark vaccine i think that's what it's called yep. uh, okay well that blocks the spread from what i understand but the covid vaccine it just prevents you from getting the bad symptoms you can still pass it on so i think it's very different and so i think before we start saying things like requiring a vaccine it's got to be something that would block the spread not just prevent you from getting symptoms that's kind of where our head's at at tmg that's a, that's i think that's a very 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 important distinction um the 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 idea of if you get this can you stop spreading it yeah right that that is that is a certainly certainly an important one um you when you when we last chatted uh you know as 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 a group you talked a lot about some of the guidelines you put together you put together an amazing uh document just kind of detailing how to handle covid clean cleanliness guidelines on opening or staying closed etc which you clearly have been following but you based a lot on the cdc guidelines um, and also just some suggestions on how to handle things as a, either within your plan, uh, which you put together very early or just in, in general, are you seeing any type of safety measures that didn't work out necessarily in 2020 and that you would kind of revise going into this year? Yeah, we, um, you know, the idea of trying to do uh, reservations on, um, yeah, yeah, so there's our plan. The idea of doing reservations for the fitness center or, you know, blocking pool chairs and all that, I mean, it just didn't work for us. Mm. Um, so so that kind of was an idea that we we thought, but in the end, we ended up just putting signs and, and, and hand sanitizer wipes and saying, you're on your own and we're going to fog it once a day. This <laughs> right. is, you know, this plan right here, can I tell you a little bit about it? Um, I think Lauren has it available for everybody if they want it at the end. It's in Microsoft Word. I've written about 50% of it and the rest of it, I have borrowed with permission from other smart, smart people, other management companies in the nation, Rangewater, Matrix, Pegasus. I've borrowed some of their stuff and put it together in a Word document so anyone can customize it. And I was waiting and waiting for someone to do it, like, or like, like someone else to completely do it. And we all kind of had holes and gaps. So finally, I just put it together. I went to the CDC uh, website um, and it was actually the whitehouse.gov website on responding to the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And it talked about a phased reopening. So I had to translate what did that website mean in the multifamily for us? Because it's very broad. It's kind of like OSHA. Right. There's no OSHA for multifamily. You have to determine what does that mean for you. And so, so we created a plan. Um, and, you know, we did some things that, you know, we created a plan. And more than just putting it in writing, we did it. So we, we even for the people that come in and work, the maintenance guys, and um, the guys, the, our team members that are giving out packages, you know, we do temperature checks and logs every single day. Why? Because that's recommended in the plan. And we have sent people home even this week that had a temperature hmm. um, because we were checking their temperature. And I hope that I hope that prevented some spread. Um, and, um, you know, social distancing, we don't just talk about it. We bought the shields. We have the signage. Um, but, you know, more than signs, signs kind of are like one thing you do. I'm not really motivated because of liability. I'm just motivated to take care of my team members. And I really mean that. Sure. So we bought the sanitation machines. Um, there's a video I sent that I think Lauren will send out. I found this little $150 machine. It's like a little handheld thing and it has a it looks very light. cool. <laughs> yeah, and it's 150 bucks. You get a solution that kills SARS, which is the agent of which is the base of COVID, and you spray everything a couple times a day. It's really easy to do. Um, and so we try to put it in action. I really wanted to have a plan with some actionable things that we could really do. So we have a daily COVID temperature log. You know, we have every day we have a log keeper uh, and that's, and, and then they have to sign their name and one person's responsible for it. And we created an email address and every day at the end of the day, they have to scan the log in. So we're keeping up with those records. Um, and also we take contact tracing serious. If one of our maintenance team members, um, at least we know where they've been and we know how to contact trace that. That's all. Awesome. Are you, um, it sounds like you, you, you have a lot of um, methodologies for, for managing this. All of them seem simple, right? Pretty straightforward, easy to execute. Um, are you finding there's any areas that are a little bit more difficult to maybe get your arms around from a day-to-day -day comes to this? Um, just, I think it's compliance. Um, in our last multifamily leadership huddle call, we talked about 
about you can't have somebody walking around with a mask with their nose down. And if you do, and you don't have a compliance memo in place with disciplinary actions, uh, I sent a copy of that to Lauren too. I mean, we, we just, after nine months of the pandemic, put a compliance memo in place with kind of like a phased disciplinary plan. I hate even talking about that on this kind of call. Uh, but we are yeah. showing it's that serious that they have to use PPE and they have to use their mask. Um, so I think compliance is very hard because you know what? I hate wearing a mask, don't you? I don't enjoy it. Um, I, I don't, um, but, but, you know, but, but I do it. And we're very serious about it. Um, you know, at our companies. So I think compliance is gotcha. the hardest thing and just making sure everybody's compliant. I mean, yeah, we've gotten calls from residents saying, hey, your guy's here without a mask and I'm not letting him in. Well, okay, you know, I want to say, what the hell? You know, um, <laughs> so we have to deal with that. No, yeah, this is, uh, and we'll make sure that we've got the list. Um, Lauren's been popping up a couple of documents along the way, the checklist, the temperature logs, right? Some of the PPE guidelines, et cetera. All of that will be available kind of in the in the post wrap up blog and we'll probably send an email out to everyone as well so everyone's got it. Yeah, and um, you know, I appreciate you putting it. these in Word docs as well. Cause yeah, we just updated it in January too, just to because I went back and read a lot of it and I was like, gosh, you know, a lot of this doesn't make sense. Let's really put what we're doing in here and have a plan in place, not for liability. Do I think we're going to go to court and someone's going to say they got COVID from it? You know, at first, yes, I thought that and I, it was kind of a liability, kind of a reflex move. But honestly, mm -hmm. I think it's just let's do common sense. Let's listen to the science. Let's let's follow the science. Let's not get too crazy and just do what is common sense. Absolutely. So this is officially turned into the COVID call. Um, but Sorry this is the world we live in right now, right? It's the world we live in at the moment. Um, I want to uh, kind of circle back around the other end, and we'll probably end a few minutes early here. Um, I appreciate everything you've mentioned as far as going into the year. I want to talk about going forward, wrapping out 2021, right? Because we've done, a, I think, a decent retro about what happened. Now we need to kind of look forward, knowing what you know now. Like what advice would you give yourself or, and, or anyone else recalibrating their, 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 their structure um, moving forward through the rest of this year? Um, company culture is everything. Um, if you work for a company where it's not as important to them as it is say at TMG, where everything for us is built around culture, um, then I think do it in your own domain, do it at your own property, you know, do it among your own team. Um, you can create culture no matter where. And so I think, I think that a few things we did when I was reflecting on this, I was thinking, you know, the consistency of team meetings, you know, where there's a purpose, everybody knows what they're going to report on, have it a little bit fun sometimes. You know, we provided lunch, I think, for every one of the maintenance team meetings during 2020. Mm. You know, that was important. We would send a Taco Bell taco bar for $25 or 50 bucks or something. It was, it's so easy to do that. Um, so I think consistency in your communication with your teams, um, teams, and that's something we don't even, uh, we don't even use the word employees. Every, everyone that works with us are team members. Um, and right. communication with your team and your residents. Uh, I, I was very sure to make sure that the communication with our residents was consistent, came from, you know, came from corporate office, often from me. And I would ask one of our uh, team members to translate it in Spanish so they knew what we were doing. Why are we closing the fitness center? Why are we reopening it now with some guidelines? You know, why is the office closed? Why is it hard to get my package? You know, who are these people coming to tour at eight o'clock at night? You know, so we were very consistent in our communication with that. And then I would say the biggest thing, Mohammed, is company culture. Can I tell you about our sweatshirts and our shirts? Please do. Please talk. Yeah. Let's talk about shirts. I know Lauren's got a couple of pictures as well. We'll pop some yeah, of we those love, as we go. Yeah, we love shirt t-shirts. We give out t-shirts all the time, almost monthly uh, to every team member. Um, and then we also love, um, we have some sweatshirts for people to be comfy at home. So this is one of them. The one on the left is our February one. Um, our awesome marketing director, Brooke, did all these. Uh, that's Love Your Home. And we only, I'll spend the extra three or $4 to get a nice quality. I mean, like, have you ever tried one of those shirts, Muhammad or Lauren, that's like thin? Yes. You know, like a yes. next level or something. So we, <laughs> yes, we like those. Um, we have Christmas shirts. We have the More Caffeine Join Teams, Pet Dogs, Unmute Please, uh, Take a Break and Drink Wine um, shirts. And so we have a lot of fun with that. We send, we've sent lunch a couple times to everybody in the company. Um, for our Christmas party this year, we gave everybody a hundred dollar, everybody, every team member, a hundred dollar Uber Eats gift card to have dinner with their family. And we did an event online, you know, for everybody, we send warm cookies to people's homes all the time. Whenever people have something to celebrate, we celebrate and whenever they have a loss or a symphony, we also sympathize mm -hmm. with it too. We, we are trying to be very much a family, um, and, and, and support our team. Yeah. 
you're, and, you're, and I think that's why everything's fallen into place. And I want to tell you, we do a monthly employee gift, Muhammad. Um, yeah. And sometimes it's three dollars. Sometimes it's a pen that has a screwdriver in it. And sometimes it's a, you know, sometimes it's a nice glass water bottle. But I mean, we probably spend maybe fifty dollars um, a year on employee gifts outside of the T-shirts. Um, and and when you get a gift every single month, you know what my favorite one was last year? It was a nugget tray. It was like for nugget sauce uh, holder. You clip it into hmm. your your vent and your in your car and oh you can my put gosh. a nugget sauce in it. <laughs> and you know it has a little branding on it. I mean, we're intentional about it. We make a plan. We do a calendar of what are the employee gifts we're going to give out every single month, and we do that. And we really believe that when you take care of our team, then the property will just perform. That's. I, I love that. Because we've got a couple of really good questions in here. Um, Julie still asked uh, two, actually in relation to the COVID topic we were just talking about. Um, one, these are scenario-based questions uh, for you. Said, have you dealt with a team member having a doctor's note for reasonable accommodation to not have to wear the mask due to a medical condition? Um, no, and I'm very, I'm proud to say that when I don't know, I just call my employment attorney. I don't try to shoot from the hip. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know if I would be comfortable with that. Um, but I also have to follow the rules. So uh, I would talk to, I, I would talk to my employment attorney. I don't and know. Good probably, question. Yeah, that's a good one. That probably actually I'm, is a solid I, I don't try to shoot from the hip as well. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I think Jamin is saying both for that. And then also there's a question here around, um, COVID pay, PTO charges, that sort of thing. That sounds yeah. like another great employee. Uh, I mean, it's employee. very clear. I mean, you know, with the, um, you know, with the CARES Act, everybody got two weeks and they didn't have to have a positive COVID test. They could just be taking care of someone or maybe they mm. could be exposed. Um, we actually are extending those. Um, we're extending those privileges through 2021, even though it's not required. It was a recommendation. It's not required. It hasn't been signed into law yet. And so, um, you know, so we just worked with our payroll provider and we just went in and added those hours when people needed it. So if you got exposed or you got COVID, we've had very few people, um, you, you know, get it. We've had some people that that uh, needed to take care of a family member and they get those 80 hours. And then, you know, on our company right. side, you just submit to that with your taxes and you get your, and, you know, you get the hours back. But I'm not really worried about that. I want a healthy organization. Yeah, yeah, I, I love that. It sounds like you're definitely thinking about it from both sides there. Um, great question, Julie. Thanks for uh, sending both of those in. Uh, before we adjourn, I hand it back over uh, to Lauren um, for some, she's got some, some, some news to share. Um, any last words for the, for the room here? Last pieces of advice, last thoughts? Yeah, you know, I, I think I've grown a lot in this last year and things that I'm not sure of, I lean into my colleagues and friends. And it's kind of like, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Anything I've said, you know, I'm easy to find. There's only one Jamin Harkness on LinkedIn. You could shoot me a text and I'm really good at sending you stuff back if you have any questions or you wanna know how, how hard was it really to roll out self-guided tours? You know, or what was that thing you were talking about with, um, you know, with CRM and the AI bot? I'm happy to share that with you, um, but I'm, I'm, um, I'm not scared to try new things. Um, I just do it very, uh, I try to do it very methodically and I lean on to people that are smart around me and, and get help. Best way to manage things. Appreciate your time today, Jamin. Thank you. I'm going to hand it back off to Lauren. Um, Jamin, great job. Muhammad, great job. Um, there is so much good information in here as far as pet screening, how to do that in the correct way, how to love on the pets when they come and how to turn that into, you know, full-time residents or how to build a good culture with your team, enabling work from home, or even leaning into the self-guided tours and virtual tours. So Jamin, thank you so, so much for joining us. Always a pleasure talking with you. Um, for those of you on this call, you guys will be receiving the full recording after this session in our follow-up blog. Be on the lookout for that to come your way either tomorrow or Monday, depending on how quickly we can get this wrapped up, as well as all of the guidelines and um, information we shared with you today. Those resources will also be available. Um, and then if you want to join us for our next Launch and Learn session, we do one every single month. Our next one is March 11th with Reallink. We will be reviewing a year of virtual touring and how that has changed and how we should still be continuing doing that going forward. So I am dropping the link in the chat right now. Um, this will also be available for you guys to sign up and register for um, during our follow-up blog and on our social media. But if you guys want to go ahead and 
register right now, go ahead and do that. It is March 11th at 12 p.m. Eastern. Um, but other than that, Jamin, Mohammed, once again, thank you so much for your time and everyone on this call. Thank you for hanging out with us. Thank Have you. a good one. All right, have a great one. Bye.